ndina bado ngati wankazi kubaso wa muna chaka chimwe na bado na ndine ndone andi kwa twanamba kumandilira ngati ntsika ngati nyamata if someone is an intersex uh, person it means that maybe he doesn't have like the actual gender mark as female and, and male maloza sizima wamera kwenye kwenye mapiragi na matio aza kala fiti aza kala uta au kala bwanji mamuna kwa maswali wankazi zolo zili mayeka for example if if you are filling a passport form they will ask about your sex, maybe your age or your tribe or what. They will just put male and female. And yet there are people who don't fit in that category. So what do we do? The Intersex Society of North America defines intersex as a general term used for a variety of conditions in which a person is born with a reproductive or sexual anatomy that doesn't seem to fit the typical definitions of female or male. For example, a person might be born appearing to be female on the outside, but having mostly male typical anatomy on the inside. Or a person may be born with genitals that seem to be in between the usual male and female types. Uh, they could be mainly to do with uh, some uh, genetic abnormalities uh, during the uh, first trimester when the baby is being formed. Uh, probably something went wrong somewhere. So you have some abnormalities which makes it more dominant. Either the child is born with uh, two sexes, uh, one predominant than the other. But mainly it's genetic causes. It is possible to, uh, to do surgery uh, in one way or the other. Maybe if the uh, child looked more like a girl and therefore uh, you can make uh, some changes for the girl features to uh, to be maintained or to be uh, improved. But it doesn't often make the the girl now to become a, a woman that can have babies or something like that. That will not happen. Similarly, if he'll, he'll, of the, if the baby looks more like a boy, you can uh, come up with surgery where you and then uh, I would say remove the girl features or make them look like a boy features, but it doesn't make the man then that the, the boy, the, the person, a boy or a man. They still have that uh, challenge where they may not uh, function as, uh, as, a, as a man or as a girl. They are in between and that's the situation. The World Health Organization, while emphasizing that intersex is an existing biological condition, observes that it is difficult to estimate the birth prevalence of intersex because there are no concrete parameters to the definition of intersex. The Intersex Initiative, a North American-based organization, estimates that one in 2,000 children or five children per day in the United States are born visibly intersex. In Malawi, the situation is even more difficult as children born in the country are identified or registered as either male or female based on both culture and legal framework. Most of the times, uh, babies uh, with intersex we don't know them until they are delivered. So when they are born, we examine them to see which one is more prominent, um, which, is, which one is more likely. So depending on what we find, sometimes we don't tell them exactly the sex until some tests are done. But uh, currently in our, in our situation we have a challenge because uh, some of the confirmatory tests cannot be easily done in the country. So we just it depends on how uh, the child is, so we advise the mother according to the conditions which we see on the child. You know, people are born different and we need to uh, recognize them. And I like what the constitution says because under the constitution, section 12, 
it states that the, the state shall recognize uh, the human rights of all persons, be them minorities. Um, yeah, so at least for the constitution, we have set the ground. It is one of the fundamental principles. We need to recognize people like that and give them all their rights. But it is the other smaller, you know, or lesser laws like uh, statutes which, which um, uh, do not recognize them. I'll give you an example. For example, if, if you are filling a passport form, they'll ask about your sex, maybe your age or your tribe or what. They'll just put male and female. And yet there are people who don't fit in that category. So what do we do? You see, so it is through that lack of non-recognition that uh, you find that the rights of certain uh, persons or intersex people are, are violated. So I would, I would really urge the state to move towards um, recognizing people like that because people are born different. The law and culture may be silent in Malawi, but this does not take away the fact that intersex people do exist. Uh, In the lecture district of Salima lives a 12-year-old intersex child who was forced to drop out of school because of fellow pupils who would follow her to the restrooms to see what appeared to be strange sexual organs. At the new school, life is a bit different. At uh, the time I noticed this, I told the mayor that this boy, this was once a girl and that he, he has now chosen to be a boy. There is a difference there. Because of his problem, he accepted him to, use, to be using the staff toilet at this school. Does that not bring any question from fellow pupils that is using, has been given special treatment? No, because by then when he goes out, his friends are in class and he goes out alone, nobody notices where he goes. Glad that the child is in school. Also thank God that the child is still alive because traditional birth attendants wanted the baby killed at birth for having strange sexual organs. People were killed, people were chased away from the village, and uh, when they want to do something in the community, they were separated because they were believed to be bad people. But now, uh, after seeing that there is a lot of kids being born like that, people changing their minds. And then with the coming up of some organizations that are there, uh, people are trying, and now I have started to understand that we, were, we can't be born in the same way. Because of the legal and cultural positions 
that identify people as only being male or female, the survival of intersex in Malawi has become a nightmare. In order to conform to one of the prescribed gender marks of male and female, for some people, medical surgery has become an option. A woman in Mangochi, a mother of an intersex, is desperate for a medical intervention to have the child confined to one gender for easy identification in the society. We do advise them sometimes uh, for surgery, uh, depending on which one is uh, more dominant. When the baby is born initially, there may be th those uh, uh, people not being sure whether it is a man or it is a boy or a girl. So at that point, perhaps people would want to wait and see which features become prominent. Uh, and those features that become prominent may be those that then you would leave uh, with the individual to maintain as they grow older. Uh, so that, that's the other one thing to consider. The other thing is that I think we this, the, the, the surgery is being made uh, or is it being uh, done for cosmetic purposes. Uh, it doesn't make then the individual now to become a man or to become a woman. It's just that uh, we've chosen that individual uh, one way or the other so that they can then integrate somehow in society. So it, it's, it's, we need to, to remember that, uh, that the surgery will not correct uh, the uh, issue fully. While surgery is preferred for some to correct what they think is an abnormality, the World Health Report of 2015 raises a concern for the so-called sex normalizing procedures, which often are undertaken during infancy and childhood. The World Health Organization warns that forcing children to conform to gendered physical norms through repeated surgeries hormonal interventions and other medical measures may subject children to lifelong consequences for their physical and mental health, including irreversible termination of all or some of their reproductive and sexual capacity. These surgeries also attract a human rights aspect. As parents, I think they need to be very careful, and even medical people, they need to be very careful because when you talk about intersex uh, uh, persons is not only uh, what you see in terms of the genitalia, what are the protruding uh, parts, but I think it goes beyond what you see. And normally uh, what they have done, uh, maybe parents uh, take by taking uh, or by subjecting uh, their children to operations is that they don't also go beyond the hormones because when you are deciding on the children without also the children making his or her own uh, decision. It becomes a challenge or a problem when that uh, person uh, is an adult. You find that what you decided when that person is young or before uh, he could or she could make a decision, you find that it's the opposite. Normally, parents are supposed to be um, uh, careful in terms of making those decisions. They should leave the, 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 the children uh, to reach a certain stage where they can make uh, their own decisions and operations can be done on the basis of what the person uh, is deciding in terms of what uh, his or her sexual identity is. Some people may not actually want to undergo any surgery 
yeah and this thing you you, you need to uh, as i said these days the thinking is that you must give you consent so you, you really if he let's say you are now 12 or 13 and you don't want to undergo any surgery society has to accept that you know you are like that you know so we need to open up our minds and uh, and accept that there are people who are born like that and they're different and we need to respect them for who they are i mean there's nothing wrong with being different <laughs> Yeah, it's just that you know we need to accept and talk about these things so that society accepts easily. True, not every intersex desires surgery. There are those that have accepted to live with the condition for life, either afraid of the consequences of the medical interventions or simply acceptance of their condition as a design of nature. This woman, in one of the villages in Salima, has lived as an intersex for 48 years. And when I came to Mutsimo, I was a good ziwa, Mina Mini, and anti ziwa Kubado Wanga, Gatimakura Mini, and now to one of Abadi de Wanga. I was a ziwa. If you are in a mouthful of what did you notice in the city and two buses gang or in the gila? Oh, bus, multi banja sun visits. Did it again? Multi bus, multi. Of course, living as intersex in a society where people are categorized as male and female has its own challenges. One has to be subjected to ridicule, stigma, and discrimination. In Doa district, in the area of group village head Kawele, lives a 40-year-old woman, a mother of five, 